Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, everything really depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Pyramid Otis. On social media, media, you know me as PD Beats. We are speaking to an actor who's in a lot of cool TV shows and movies, but he will star with Ruby Rose and Jean Reno in The Doorman, which will be coming out October 9th. We are with Rupert Evans. Rupert, welcome to Pop Turnative. Um, Pete, thank you for having me on Pop Turnative. It's, uh, it's a great show. Thanks. I'm no. very, very grateful. Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing this. And I mean, The Doorman is just uh, a very exciting, fun action film. And I think we need those films at a time like this. Yeah, it was great fun to shoot um, in Romania. We all we all sort of uh, piled over there. And you're right. It's a great, great action thriller. Um, we had a lot of fun, as I said, making it. Ruby uh, Rose was, was great fun, and as was Jean Renaud. And, and uh, we had a wonderful time. Yeah, it's a great, it's full of nonstop action. And for those people who like that kind of thing, this certainly will, will suit them down to the ground. Absolutely. What do you kind of think it is specifically about just like an action film? Is it because like a lot of these films, the focus is the fight scenes, the explosions. Um, but there's a lot of amazing films like this where the acting also kind of take plays into uh plays a role as well do you find that's kind of the ev- uh, evolution of the genre where there's very good acting in uh, action movies rupert yeah i mean i think you know i think you've you've hit the nail on the head i think with action movies there has to be a heart doesn't it have to be a heart attached to the to the movies you know the iconic action movies whether it's die hard or you know those types of you know, you really do root for the for the for the character, and you believe that their dilemmas and and what they're going through. And I think with this film is the same. You know, Ruby um, Ruby Rose is you know she plays a former Marine, and and she's sort of when she left and became a Marine, and she kind of has a troubled um, backstory with her own family, and then has yep. you know and sort of had a problem. Uh, you know, sort of someone dies that she was sort of looking after while um, while um, while a sort of a uh, bodyguard as such, um, and so she has a past. And so this movie, like all those iconic action movies, has a great heart and a great sort of narrative underneath the action, which I think you know people need. People need that to kind of really invest and believe in the movie. There's a lot of, I'm sure, a lot of. Um scenes that were kind of exciting to shoot and you know the landscape of you know stunt men and everything is just phenomenal there's so many amazing people doing amazing yeah. things what were kind of some yeah. standouts um in terms of working on this project like what kind of blew your mind was it like the stunt work was there certain scenes that you had to be in with jean ruby that what was that like i think um you know I, what i loved about working on this movie was collaborating really with um you know with the director and the other actors i had a lot of scenes with jean renault and axel axel uh henny um who was absolutely fantastic to work with and and you know we, we obviously had the template of the script but yeah. from that we really tried to kind of you know <clears throat> add the stakes and really try to heighten the stakes in each in each scene and uh, create something that people will really not, you know, be on the edge of their seats when they watch it. And I think certainly um, the stuff that happens in the apartment, which is where I'm kind of my character's based, yep, um, you know, I'm the sort of hostage character, really. And uh, and that, and that, you know, those, those kind of heightened stakes are very much, you know, really, you know, integral and crucial to those scenes. So mm. it, it uh, yeah, it was working with the director and the actors really to try and kind of create the best, the best scenes possible. Oh, for sure. Um... I do want to also mention, um, we talked about it on the top, you were also in a horror movie that has generated a lot of buzz, and in fact, there was a sequel made of it recently. You were in The Boy. You were in that film. Yeah. And yeah, I have yeah, to I say, isn't it crazy how massive the genre of horror has become, Rupert? It's crazy. It, it's it, Listen, I mean, in, particularly in North America, and Europe, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a British actor, 
Um, <clears throat> and I've done sort of two or three now horror movies, but it really has sort of taken taken off in the last five years. You know, Annabelle and, and others that come to mind. But The Boy was, for me, I think one of it was my it was the most enjoyable experience for me because it really was a, a great story, a great director, uh, William Brent Bell. Um, and I, I just really, you know, and Lauren Cohen was a great, a great kind of uh, co co actor with me. And yeah, it was really great fun. And, and we, we really tried hard to, uh, to kind of scare people, you know, we yeah. really did. And uh, the director was very, you know, he, he had a real understanding of all that. So he was great. So yeah, the but boy was fantastic. It's pretty crazy because this is a film, I want to say, was it 2017, 2018, or before? Yeah, I think it was the back end of 2016. Actually. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. part of, because I was talking to other people about this, there's like a crop of movies, like a timeline, Ruber, from like 2016 to like 2020, yeah, where they're yeah. all kind of being watched and resurfacing. Like, it's cool to see. Yeah, it's really good. And I think, you know, I think, you know, you know young kids, you know, are going to the cinema still. And I, I, I love the movies. And I, I, I watch a lot of movies, but, you know, inevitably the way the world is going right now, you know, a lot of people are watching movies at home. And I, I hope, and you know, I really do hope people still go to the, to the cinema, you know. And, and I miss, I, I right miss it, Rupert. I miss Me kind too. of going, you know, you have dinner before with your friends, you go to the theater, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And you're at the theater, yeah. you don't have to dress up all nice and go in sweatpants and a hoodie, get your popcorn. It's great. <laughs> But I think, you know, the people that, you know, horror movies really appeal to that sort of, you know, sort of, you know, early, you know, late teens, early 20s that, you know, they, they still want to go and watch movies, you know, um, you know, in, in, the, in the movie theater. And I hope that they, you know, I really do. I really hope they, you know, they, they still do because uh, a lot of people are not going to the movies. And I think, you know, they'll miss out on that sort of really spectacular kind of feeling when you watch a horror movie, um, you know, in the, in the movie theater. We talked a little bit about two films. We talked about, obviously, The Doorman. It comes out October 9th, starring yourself, Ruby Rose, and Jean Reno. But, and we also talked yeah. about The Boy. But you've also kind of worked in television and had some really cool roles in TV. For you specifically, yeah. do you kind of look at film and television kind of the same way as you tackle it as an actor, as a storyteller? Or do you kind of well, see them as two different mediums? No, I mean, you know, TV has changed a lot in the last 10 years. And, um, you know, as people know now, you know, streaming and how we watch TV and uh, the budget of TV has, has changed dramatically beyond recognition. And when I, you know, uh, when I started, you know, 15 years ago, <clears throat> you know, it was a very, very different thing. And now with, with streaming and obviously all the big players, you know, they, they have they spend as much money now on a TV series. Um, you know, the Netflix and Amazons of this world, um, you know, they, they, they spend as much on a TV show as you would do a kind of mid range movie. Do you know what I mean? Um, oh, absolutely. You know, I, um, I just finished, um, the man in the high castle for Amazon and, you know, that was 10 episodes and nearly, nearly a hundred The production, uh, the production value of that show is yeah. insane. And the production value of TV now is so kind of, <clears throat> it's, it's so extraordinary that it, it, it challenges, you know, it challenges movies. And so really that mid range movie that used to be sort of, you know, your 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar movie, you know, it's very hard to get those made anymore because TV has taken over. It's kind of taken that slot. So I, I really do feel, and for actors as well, it's great to play a character with a huge arc and you, you get to play a character through a whole 10 hours rather than just a movie. So, you know, I, I do see it as the same, really, to be honest now, on TV and film, really kind of, you know, battling it out. But, um, but yeah, TV has, has certainly changed. And, um, and they you know, they've really kind of, you know, and the writing as well, television writing is really good now as well in, in that genre. So it's, it's kind of insane what's happening. It's the golden age of television. Yeah, yeah, I think it is, you know, and it really is exciting. You know, I think we're all... You know, but I, I still have there's something about a movie that yeah. I, you know, that I, I I kind of hold on to that is different for me. I don't know, but and going to the movies is different. You know, I still feel I still have a love for the movies. It's a slightly different about a movie. I, I want to get a little like philosophical and a little deep right now of a question. It's it's an industry question. It's a question that um. I often ask a lot of people where a lot of people watch Rupert Evans and a lot of TV shows and movies and, you know, they follow you on Instagram and, you know, you're um, someone that a lot of people look up to and they're a big fan of you in movies. Do you kind of, um, do you ever think about the 
especially, you know, you're on social media and some people are more active than others, but you know, you were on the big screen and even though, you know, the job is as, as an actor is, you know, to audition and to go in and then you do your scenes. But do you ever think about the responsibility of like you having a big following as an actor on social media? Have you ever thought about that? that there's a responsibility and that's also part of the job. Yeah, Pete, this is deep stuff. Um, <laughs> I, you know what? I, um, I never did before, but I, I have to be honest with you. I do now, and I have, I have kids now. Um, I have little babies, and um, you know, it's weird. I, I, I do think of, uh, I do look at social media, and look, I'm not, you know, I, I think social media can be a really, you know, a, a force of good uh, in many ways, and I think it, it has its place. But I, I am. Uh, I think I'm pretty still old school. And so I don't use social media as much as uh, others. You know, I really don't. And um, it's not because I don't like it or I disagree with it. It's purely because I think I'm, you know, I have two babies that make, you know, that, that just cause my life, you know, cause me hell. And so, uh, you know, I don't have much of a life right now. So um, I don't really spend much time on, on social media. But I do feel now, you know, as I look, as I go ahead, I do have a responsibility. Yeah, you're right. It's really boring. It's really dull to say that, but you do. And, um, you know, how so much has happened, not even during the pandemic, is it? You know, we've got, you know, Black Lives Matter and all these things. And I, I, I feel it is important to kind of, you know, state what you feel and, and, and how, what you believe in, if you feel that's important to you, if you don't, you know, you don't have to, but yeah. So I do feel there is a responsibility and with kids as well, it makes you think of life in a very different way. So, yeah. I do sure. kind of, uh, yeah, I do feel there is a responsibility. You can't just sort of mouth off and and, and not, not uh, you know, take on the consequences of that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we all have to be, but at the same time, I think we have to be respectful, you know, and we have to kind of, you know, understand that people have different views and, and, you know, and, not, and, and not be intimidated by different views, but actually be, you know, I think we have to kind of listen. We have to listen a little more, you know, we all have to listen. Including sure. me. No, we do. Yeah, no, it's just like, even not even the social media thing. I mean, people just see you on TV and movies all the time. And I feel like there's just kind of this responsibility because you're, you know, you're in like the public eye a lot more than the. the yeah, but Pete, I also just think that I'm just an actor and what the hell do I know about anything? You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, but there, you understand too, the but, optics, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. But, you know, I, I do also think that I'm just, you know, sometimes that I, you know, I have a view on things. You know, I really do. I have strong views on things, but mm -hmm. um, ultimately, you know, sometimes I do. Sometimes. I see, I don't know, interviews with some actors and think, you're just an actor. What the hell do you know about that? You know, um, so, you know, you've got to be, you know, you've got to tread a fine line, I think. Um, I think oh. it's all about how strongly you feel about something. And if you feel you have something to add to that, you know, I think everyone has a right to kind of uh, voice stuff. You know? Oh, for sure. Well, Rupert, thank you so much for joining me and to talk on hey, Pop but, Alternative. Thank you. I, uh, I, love the, I love the podcast and thank you for having me on uh, Pop, Pop Alternative. It's fantastic. Absolutely. No, I really appreciate it. So The Doorman comes out October 9th. You'll be able to yeah. get that on demand and it stars yourself, Jean Renault and Ruby Rose and it's just a fun exciting action film. It certainly is that. A lot of action, a lot of thrills, great car chases, a lot of explosions, but uh, uh, you know, great acting as well. And it's worth seeing Jean Renault and uh, uh, you know, do his stuff. He's uh, he's he's amazing. So yeah. And I worth, mentioned worth social media. Where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? God, uh, social media. Um, on Instagram, I think I'm it's my name, Rupert Evans, and then um, <laughs> I think my handle for Twitter is Rupert underscore Evans. I think uh, you'll find me on uh, on those two things. Yeah, certainly. And I do tweet now and again. Uh, I'm just doing a, a show right now, so ever so often there will be uh, this stuff always pops up. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, congrats about the film. And we're all excited to watch October 9th. Thanks, Pop. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, bud. Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turn. If you do.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes, you can catch Robert Evans with Jean Renault and Ruby Rose in The Doorman, which will be available October 9th on demand. And until next time, this is Rupert Evans and Petey Beats signing off. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn it Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.